the oxygen. This is uh, literally this is the process of charging the mitochondria and the cells. In it, right? It's a lot deeper than it seems, bro. I want you to really try to focus here on letting go of your thoughts. Right? Thinking's not really helping us right now. Think about to start here. The practice is really just letting go of thinking and just taking charge of really feeling, just feeling what's going on and almost taking your judgment about what you feel out of the, out of the picture. You're just a state of witness, right? Family on three! One, two, three! Here we go. Pinball Republic Sea Wolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill. Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone and uh, just letting you guys know we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diaverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimal purchase, and you're good to go. I got the best value at Heritage Homes. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions that I plan on making in my lifetime, and I feel like I got the best price for what I wanted. I love my house. <laughs> We're a building a lot home builder, and what that means is if you own your property or if you're looking for property to build on, then we can build on it for you. We'll help you find a floor plan and customize it. Whether you were to come in or if you were to go online and, and see our website and talk to us on the live chat, we would help you pick out a floor plan. You would work with one of our designers and he would make customizations, rearrange it for you if you wanted to um, help you make the home yours. I've had so many people that's asked me who built my house. Everything that we asked and, and said we wanted, they were willing to listen and go, we'll, we'll make it happen. Not only do we build for our homeowners, we build for their friends, their family. Uh, they even come back to us and build their second and third homes with us. We built, I think it's over 3,500 homes now. 
Family is important to us. We um, know that the biggest thing about family is trust, and we want you to know that we're here for you throughout the process. We're right here by your side, and that the house that you envision when you first walk in and meet with a designer, that's the house you're going to get whenever you finish the process and you move in. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking and uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. So here at Gold Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Saturday night, and we are in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum for some Sea Wolves hockey. My name is Wes Barnett, alongside Harold Rose on the ones and twos tonight, also doing some color commentary. Last night, Sea Wolves dropped uh, a tough one, six to three, but uh, looking to rebound tonight. Keep in mind, the Sea Wolves have already clinched the playoffs, and mathematically, we are locked in to the fourth seed. So. What does that entail for tonight? I'm not sure. How do they come out? Do they come out fast? Do they come out aggressive? Do you see some guys who maybe haven't had all the minutes tonight? Stay tuned. We will find out. So we'll take it to the ice as they take away the starting lineups.
first as always, the She-Wolves. First out. Number 72, Connor Mullen. Number 27, Connor Lynn. You see Connor Lynn accompanying the new addition. Dmitry Kuznetsov getting the starting nod. Dalton Anderson. Justin Portillo, and then in goal for the Seawolves tonight, the vet, Joe Shepard. Here come the rest of the Seawolves as we take the ice. As I said, Joe Shepard in goal for the Seawolves, Cody Karpinski in goal for the Thunderbirds. We've seen this matchup before. It's between not only the two teams, but also the two goaltenders. We'll get a national anthem from a special guest we have a band the north woolmarket middle school band here for the national anthem Shout out to the North Wool Market Middle School Band. Now our ceremonial puck drop. I'm not a betting man, but I'm willing to take guess the Sea Wolves win the ceremonial puck drop. Just didn't hear the sponsor on that, but shout out. Thank you for your support of the Sea Wolves. Puck drop, Seawolves win it. Nice. First of uh, hopefully many face-off wins for the good guys tonight. Your Bay Pest Control Pest of the Game is number 10 for the Thunderbirds, Gus Ford. He has 41 goals and 45 assists 
this season. 86 points. That's pretty good. All right. We get a uh, conversation center ice. The guy's wearing black and white. Seawolf skating around wearing uh, some alternate jerseys for autism awareness tonight. Walking into the arena, I saw Joe Pace uh, setting up the sensory zone located at the entrance of the Coliseum. Got some that as well as some other things tonight. Some good uh, good things. The Seawolves have done a good job with all of the uh, different promotions, but when it's something like Down Syndrome Awareness Night, uh, Autism Awareness Night, they do a good job of getting everyone involved and in, uh, creating a welcoming environment. But Saturday night, Coast Coliseum, Seawolves Hockey, tie-up goes in favor of the Thunderbirds. They'll pass it around. D to D pass. And uh, there we go. Seawolves with it. Connor Lynch pass goes center ice. A, a tie-up for it. Portillo wanting to get in there, but uh, nonetheless goes to Batita. And that'll ricochet to the boards behind Shepard. Anderson with it. He'll tape it off the boards. Thinks Portillo's a little further than he was. That pass, a little too much mustard on it. Thunderbird skating in. Good hip check. Ends up a desperation pass. Goes into a threatening area, but Seawolves are there. Lind blocking a shot. Not sure if that was by choice. Uh, more of he got caught in front of that one. Thunderbirds will be patient. Take it behind their own net. And uh, Seawolves will say, go ahead. Do your thing. A couple of fans uh, let them know that that's not appreciated. And Lucas Helen says, hey, man, you take your time. Cross into neutral ice or into attacking ice, but they will get a whistle. Not sure, possibly an offsides called on that. 18 minutes, 46 seconds left, and no score here early. If you watched any FPHL game in the past uh, like 10 years, I uh, promise you these games can uh, explode in scoring. I don't play it along. Helen, good effort to get there. Opportunity for Philip Wong, but that one goes wide. And Wong, maybe a little frustration, throws the body into the Thunderbird. Quick back skating. The shot goes wide. That's Pastuka's shot. It'll go wide. Tic tac toe behind the net. The Seawolves will get in front of it, but Thunderbirds will take it away. Wong throws out a skate, ends up getting a kick save. Thunderbirds go around the back of the net. Still searching for an option. Now back towards the blue line, a drop pass, miscommunication, and here comes Helen. Helen, not much doing. Looks for Stoya, but now back over to Anderson. Anderson's shot is gloved by Kerpinski, and uh, I think I think I need to say something. It is good to see. The uh, the great white shark Matt Stoya on the ice. I wasn't I wasn't here last night. I missed last night. Shout out to uh, to the broadcast for staying strong. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't get to see his debut after the suspension. Face off to Karpinski's stick side. Thunderbird gets kicked out. I think that was Pastuka. Maybe got kicked out. Either him or Baker bounced around. And uh, what looks like possession for the Seawolves, that's Lissio. He finally gets out, skates around, and gets a little bit of room, but quickly pressured by the Thunderbirds. That one goes around, tries to block it along the boards, but gets past him, and that will be Klein, or there's our Mullins all the way out. Long pass. Intended for Baker completed across the ice. Batita tries to get around Montanac. Sorry, what's an opportunity for Jackson Bond, but couldn't quite get out. Now yeah, that'll be a penalty. We'll see what the official call is. Looks like Thunderbirds going to the box. So a power play opportunity for the Seawolves with 16 
minutes, or sorry, 17 minutes left in the first period. So, power play going into this game for the Seawolves at 21%. The penalty kill for the Thunderbirds at 79. Together, that makes 100%. I don't know. I don't know if that yeah. math does anything for us. Yeah, but. last night they were one for three. Right, on right. The power right. play. We'll see. Portillo getting a late power play goal last night. That was his second goal of the night. But was not enough to get past the Thunderbirds. That's Wong. Can't win the faceoff, but see, we'll still have it. There's Coach down there waiting for it. Portillo goes behind the net. It gets back out to Coach. Coach goes for the one timer to Helen. Helen shot goes under the defender. Bond spins around. Now some traffic in front of the net. But uh, all the excitement, all for naught. Gus Ford, the Bay Pest Control pest of the game. He gets it over to Batita, or sorry, Pastuca. And Ford will pursue as the Seawolves settle it behind their own net. Playing out, here comes Stoya. He goes to Bond. Bond showing some speed, getting around the corner, goes back around, tries to for the wraparound, and uh, bails out almost with the pass. But that goes all the way back to Shepard. Seawolves will reset. Stoya back behind the net again. This time doesn't settle, just slow skates by. Portillo runs out of room, passes it around, goes back to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov can't really handle it, but Seawolves maintain possession. Lissio around the back of the net. Lissio passes it over to Helen. Helen looking for Stoya gets turned around. Thunderbirds will have that one, and they'll put it high in the air and kill off a little of this penalty. 30 seconds left on the power play for the Seawolves and uh, threatening a good leading pass to Helen. Karpinski wants to play it out, but uh, decides against better judgment. Lissio and Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov goes back over to Helen. Helen has Lind at the top of the key. That's where he'll go. Now back over to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov sends a shot, goes wide. Lissio goes after it. Five seconds left on the penalty, and Thunderbirds seem to have killed this one off. Penalty over, even strength. Seawolves trying to attack. Kuznetsov with a good pass to Wong. Wong with a shot. And a blocker save by Kropinski. Tough hit. Looked like a cross check. And, yeah, we'll get a whistle. As the referee nearest to it had his head turned, but the referee on the backside did see it. Seawolves will not like that one. 14 minutes, 41 seconds. And, yeah, that will take us what looks like to our first Hold up. First media timeout? Yes, that'll take us to our first media timeout. When we come back, some more first period action here in the Coast Coliseum. Live from Biloxi, this is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we want to just keep you connected. the ice two minutes back on the power play for the Seawolves so some threatening opportunities in the first power play but uh, to no avail hopefully Seawolves make something shake some energy from the Coliseum here on a Saturday night Last homestand. Last homestand, uh, final home game tomorrow. Yeah. In the afternoon, an afternoon game. It's Columbus River Dragons are coming to town. Sunday, 4 o'clock. Seawolves with a face-off win. They'll send a shot, kind of unexpecting. 
and Vaughn tries to get around. He'll send another one wide, and that'll be killed off by the Thunderbirds. Shep will tap it to Bond, and Bond, nobody around him, but does some kind of a wild spin move. Look pretty, pretty athletic, if you ask me. Stoya coming down the ice. Stoya gets it through to Bond. Bond has to shake through, gets through, but a couple of physical checks from the Thunderbirds. See, we'll still have it. Stoya trades spots with Bond. Gets pressured and immediately put into the glass. Back across. Kosh has it. Kosh has an opportunity. Decides to go back, makes one more pass, a shot off what looked like the shoulder of Kropinski. See what was at it again. Now deflected and a shout out to Jackson Bond. Flying down the ice, breaks up what would have been a breakaway opportunity. Shot still gets through. That's Gus Ford for the Thunderbirds. I think I speak for all Sebo fans when we are say. Good thing he is off the ice. So he gets a line change. Seawolves faithful wanted a penalty there for tripping, but just got tied up. 35 seconds left on the power play. It so, looks like the Seawolves can get one more chance here. Go on the attack in the Firestone power play. Played around the corner. Back around, dumped in, and now that'll be Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov has Lysio. Lysio with a shot into the right armpit of Kropinski. You know, so far early in this game, the Seawolves have been a lot more active in the zone. Yes. It's helpful with two power plays. And you had mentioned it, Thunderbirds came out physical. They did. And when, when Wong put the man in the boards there at the beginning, and really what kicked off that scoring right. spurt last night was Wong standing up for his teammates and spurred a little activity at the end of the second period going into the third. And I imagine uh, some of the same will continue if uh, the physicality continues. One by the Thunderbirds and dumped in. Four seconds, three, two, one. Seawolves 0 for 2 on the, pen on the power play tonight. Connor Lind with a good stick. He gets around. Kuznetsov tries to make a move. Can't get there. Thunderbirds now going mid-ice. And uh, Wong almost uh, taught Yuri Pastuka, sorry, Klopinger, a um, a physics lesson right there. But uh, Klopinger able to sidestep away from the big shoulder check. Played in by Batita. Batita meets a couple of Seawolves. And now here comes Bond. Bond has some trouble with it. Ends up kicking it to himself and can't get it across the blue line. Now Helen dumps it in. There's Stoya in pursuit. Played back around. It's interesting to see how Helen's going to play now that Stoya is back. We saw Helen kind of take over that offensive defenseman role in his absence, but Helen tonight soon to be playing along the blue line in the offensive zone. Battle for it on the glove side of Karpinski. Now, opportunity, Seawolves with some open ice. They'll get a shot, and Karpinski gets a save. 11 minutes, 23 seconds. Shots on goal in the arena are 6-1. to one. Officially, 5-1. to one. Huh, in favor of the Seawolves. A lot different from last night. Yes, yes. Seawolves kind of living in the offensive zone tonight, but can't get anything through. Face-off win by the Seawolves, but they'll put it behind the net, and now the River Dragons will take over. Along the near side, what well, would have been Gus Ford, an opportunity for a one-timer, goes just wide. Mullins now back there. He's having to work extra hard on this shift. Dalton Anderson now tags in. And uh, just a little bit of the toe of his stick from uh, Mullins, marks it off. Zydeco, or Zydeco. Sure. Thunderbirds play along their side, lose it, and Portillo gets it to Helen. Helen sends it with everything he has, hits the ice, just out of reach of Kuznetsov. Thunderbirds take it along the near side. Big battle for it. Lysio comes away with it. 
has some trouble with some traffic, but gets out. 10 minutes, 15 seconds left. Connor Lynn with a big shot. Opportunity there. I thought Kerpinski had it initially, but uh, popped out and Steve was almost capitalizing on it. Steve was almost had a chance to clean up on that on that rebound. So 0 for 2 so far in uh, the period, well, in the game on the penalty on the power play for the Seawolves. But uh, there you go. Another another series, another uh, whistle that uh, ends in the Seawolves threatening. Tie up. Ends up to Lynn. Lynn sends a, a rocket shot, but goes just a little bit left. And Wong cleans it up, sends it back to Lynn. Lynn goes to Wong. Wong goes back over, tries to find Koch, and taken out. And here comes the speed of the Thunderbirds. A good shot, but a better save. And uh, you hear the crowd reaction to that Joe Shepard save right there. Wong getting a little more physical. Opportunity for River Dragons and kept out off the near post. Goodness. Joe Shepard, back-to-back shots. Koch. Great move behind the back. He gets a shot, and that one almost goes in. Nine minutes, 26 seconds. That'll, that'll take us to our second media timeout. I need to catch my breath. Uh, we will be right back here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum when they drop the puck live in Biloxi. This is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. So here at Gold Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Was the uh, the tune that Logan named? It's a good song. It's a great song. Nine minutes, 26 seconds. All tied up here. 0-0 zero, zero in the Coliseum on a Saturday night. Seawolves with eight shots on goal. Thunderbirds with four. And uh, I'll be honest, the Seawolves eight have been way more entertaining and way more threatening than the four from the Thunderbirds. Although, Joe Shepard, two uh, highlight Sports Center top 10 plays a couple minutes ago. Face-off tie-up ends up in the hands of the Thunderbirds. Quickly taken away. But not much going on. Jackson Bond, he throws the body. Ends up with it. He'll settle it. Realizes he doesn't have to be in as much a hurry as he is. And that pass almost taking out the referee. And offsides is the call. I was wondering. I was like, Stoya was first one down there. Yeah. So no icing, but. Huh. What is it? Was it an icing? It looks like it's going to be there. Interesting. Down here in the circle, near side on the goal. In the sea zone. It, it looked like Stoya was down there. I don't know. Beats me. Yeah. Face off in the Sea Wolves zone. And Dalton Anderson will get the boot. Here comes Jackson Bond. Jackson Bond <laughs> says, All right, I'll take the face off and almost takes it to center ice. Back in action. Eight minutes, 45 seconds left in the first period. It's in trouble with it, but now it's just dumped in and Seawolves get a line change. Thunderbirds trying to capitalize on the open ice on the uh, far side from the boards. But uh, to no avail. Portillo sends the pressure forces a drop pass. Now Wong trying to do his uh, 
his best job. Jan Slalak, his shot ends up taking away, taking off a stick. That was uh, a little scary. And now here comes Portillo. Reminder, Portillo with two goals late in the third period last night. Those were his first goals. Right. There you of go. Of the season. We had a couple of additions. Portillo. Uh, who was it? Portillo. Monanac. Clusot. Mullins. We had a bunch of them that joined about three weeks ago. and uh, Clusot yeah. and... Mellon joined yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, there you go. Hot off the bus. <laughs> Hopefully they can uh, be as productive as Portillo in his early start. Shot, not much uh, threatening there. And Shep just throws the glove out. He'll get a save and a stoppage, 7 minutes, 34 seconds. We always like to see where the puck doesn't bounce off because last night Carolina was able to capitalize on a lot of the rebounds. Mm. A lot of trouble in front of the net, not able to clear it out. But being able to get that stop there. The uh, difference in the two goaltenders the Seawolves have and Shepard and Wyrick. Shepard's very controlled in his move. With Wyrick, you'll see him throw his legs up, stand on his head, do all sorts of other stuff. He's, he's kind of wild. They both get some decent results as Hugo Koch gets pressured and held up against the boards. Koch throws an elbow. The referee didn't see it. I saw it. And uh, that shot goes out and into the glove of Kopinski. And Hugo Koch, pay attention to Hugo Koch. There was some uh, little extracurricular involved in that one. Yeah. The second night of the matchup here in this series, it's a little bit chippier than it right. was than it was last night. You know, that, that final period, the uh, Seawolves were able to add three yeah, goals. Yeah. And Lind gets tied up with a teammate, and they'll have to check up past the blue line. And Thunderbirds are just flying around getting – Two skaters on the puck at all times. Some trouble with it. That's Bioni. Lind ends up with it. Koch tries to get a little tap in right there. Dalton Anderson, he'll send one. Dalton Anderson just kind of skates in there. I'm not going to say it's a poke check because he, he used his, his body, but it'll work. Quick passing. That one goes in front. Tried to be quick for the spinning shot. There's kind of backhanded. It was Anderson, but didn't go through. That one goes between the legs of a Thunderbird. Some frustration and good job by Lissio not giving him anything easy. A rocket shot and uh, into the chest of Shepard. I know he has padding, but like that might leave a bruise. That was that, that was, was a, a rocket. Rip. Yeah, that was a rip right there. And the Carolina was able to find a lot of open ice last night. Yeah. He had a good good lot of open ice right there. Good look, but Shepard was there for the save. That one goes all the way to the far corner, and Helen will get it. Now it'll be sent up. Major League pop-up. Jackson Bond gets it. He takes a shot, and almost, almost, we got a rebound. Play long. That's Wong. He sends it off the back of the net. Kuznetsov sends it back. Here's Wong again. Wong loses it. Now Thunderbird's coming down the near side. Helen, good job. Just physical play of being there. Pass across Stoya. He's going to take a shot, and he finds the back of the net. Matt Stoya, a wrist shot from the right side of the goal, right behind Karpinski. Seawolves. A one-goal lead. Five minutes, 41 seconds left in the first period. The Great White Shark, Matt Stoya, does it again. Nice. Last night, he was able to get two assists on his return. And now he yeah. finds the back of the net for, no, for a goal. Seawolves, one-goal lead. And here we go. 14 shots on goal. It was bound to happen eventually. Stoya just went in there. All simple. Wasn't a deflection or anything. He just found some open ice and an absolute ripper. We'll get the official stats. Philip Wong with the assist. There you go. Already, 
Thunderbird's trying to get, make something shake. And now a opportunity for Tillo. He's going to try and dump it in. Gets caught once a line change, but doesn't get far enough down the ice. Now he sends it. That one a little slow roller. And Coach tries to make something happen, but Thunderbirds get through. Here's Jackson Bond. Sorry, Hugo Coach. Coach back around to Lynn. Lynn sends one. A little slow hopper. Now back around. Tries to get something quick. Now I'll go over to Mullins. Off the referee. Now Thunderbirds. They want a shot. Good defense by Connor Lynn. Not letting anything happen. And in front, a pass in front of the goal. And that results in a Thunderbird goal all tied up here. A quick answer. Exactly one minute. A one-minute answer. Ford found a lot of open ice right there in the high slot, and he was able to put it home. That's the kind of heat Shepard had on him last night throughout mm -hmm. the second period, and the defense is going to have to keep them from finding that open ice. We will find the uh, official stats when they come through, but uh, that hurts. Two even strength goals. A quick answer exactly one minute after the Seawolves. Matt Stoya puts it in the back of the net. That's going to be the Bay Pest Control Pest of the Game, Gus Ford, with the goal, and he is assisted by Roman Kramer. Yikes. Nonetheless, we got some hockey to play. Four minutes left in the period. Bond goes back, but Karpinski gets there first. He sends it on, and Bond's not going to be able to get there. Helen, good job getting it. He takes the shot. Thunderbirds wanted a hand pass, and he catches it, puts it down, and we'll get a whistle. Not a lot of contact with the hand. He was able to put it down quick. Right. And that'll take us to our final media timeout of the first period. Live from the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, all tied up 1-1. This is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back. Back in the game. Back in motion. Back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists. We will... <laughs> Jackson Bond, Philip Wong, Lucas Helen skating around the ice, getting the crowd fired up as we are all tied 1-1. One, one. See what was looking to end the first period in a uh, fast, aggressive, and high-scoring fashion. Stoya's goal put him in the 10 goals for the year. You hear in the background, that's uh, Matt Horde, the occasional ones and twos operator for the Seawolves broadcast. Occasional color commentator doing the uh, stadium work tonight. Electric as always. Anderson and Bond turn the Thunderbirds around and a, uh, a pass just gets there. That gets to Batita. And then they'll have to turn around. Dumped in. Shep watches it goes by. Now a uh, collision into the boards. Helen loses the stick, picks it back up. Right back at it. Thunderbird goes to the crown. And we'll get a whistle. Not sure what that whistle is. But once again, and, uh, we see that physicality we were talking about here on the near side boards. It looks looks like a penalty for the Seawolves, and that's going to be Lucas Helen going into the penalty box. So Seawolves already 0 for 2 on the power play tonight. The Thunderbirds getting their first opportunity. They are 23% on the power play this season. Seawolves 
sitting at a 75% penalty kill. Thunderbirds win the face off. Quick shot, and uh, Shep loses the stick, saves it, and trips up Phil Wong in the process. But now Thunderbirds around the net. Three minutes left in the period. A minute 40 left on the penalty. This is a glass doctor penalty kill. First one of the night for the Seawolves. Back across, Seawolves maintaining their defensive shape. And that one, the Stuka shot. Caught some traffic, never found Shepard or the net. Opportunity, quick shot. And that one goes up and out of play. A flying biscuit. Gus Ford was left all alone back yes, there. The defense got out of position. And he was almost able to get put one right here on the short side. He's already gotten enough goals tonight. One minute, 18 seconds left on the penalty. Two minutes, 33 seconds left in the period. Face-off win for the Seawolves. And promptly launching it down the ice. Kill off a little more of that penalty. Karpinski comes out of the goal to play it. He'll settle it. Wong forces Thunderbirds to make a move. Now it goes past Bond. Gets back and he'll send it on. Stoya waiting around the uh, Seawolves blue line. The puck comes right to him. Here we go. That's Jan Salak. He goes over to Bates. Pass back over, intended for Salak. Saves it, doesn't go across the blue line. Still on side. Gus Ford. Now back over. Lissio getting in the way of the passing lane. Turning that one over. 20 seconds left on the penalty. 30, 135 left in the period. Break that one up, but Thunderbird there to make a move. That's Bioni. Or Salak. Looking across. Thunderbirds trying to make a long pass, but blocked and then recovered quickly by Thunderbirds. There's Schnapp. Oh, and Schnapp takes a hit from Helen, who immediately comes out of the penalty box and throws the shoulder. Schnapp moving a little slower after that one. You'll get a regime change as Connor Lynn, the only Seawolf to stay on the ice. Schnapp can't really grab it. And that will end the penalty. So, successful penalty kill for the Seawolves. 40 seconds left in the period. Back across. Now all the way back. Played behind the net. Of Joe Shepard. Quick shot. That one goes off what looked like the skate or the post. Either way, doesn't count. Now Bond. He gets the angle. Goes to the ice. Regains it. He's all alone. A little more support. Find Stoya. Stoya between the legs. Back over. Stoya with an opportunity and a great goal. Terrific cut movement. Incredible passing. Great job. Eight seconds left in the period. Seawolves. Take a 2-1 lead on an absolute beauty of a goal. Quick passing, move. I, I, I don't even know what to say. That was incredible. That, 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 that's what you look up. Absolutely. How do you, how you want to see it break down? It's good puck movement. Then got able to, were there for the opportunity of the rebound, forced the goalie to have to slide across. Uh -huh. Wasn't able to get there. Wide open. And if I'm not mistaken, Matt Stoya with his second goal? His second night? goal of the night. Matt Stoya, second goal. His 11th of the year. <laughs> Helen just sends it, and that one goes into the seats. And that does it for the first period. Seawolf scoring the first goal. Matt Stoya scoring the first goal. Carolina comes back. They score the second goal, and then with eight seconds, Matt Stoya scores his second goal. How about it? 2-1 lead. We'll come back uh, in a little bit, recap the first period, and get back to the action when they get back. 
live from the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. This is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Here we go. Pinball Republic Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just chill. Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone and uh, just letting you guys know we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diaverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimum purchase, and you're good to go.
we have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking. And uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. I got the best value at Heritage Homes. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions that I plan on making in my lifetime and I feel like I got the best price for what I wanted. I love my house. <laughs> We're a building a lot home builder, and what that means is if you own your property or if you're looking for property to build on, then we can build on it for you. We'll help you find a floor plan and customize it. Whether you were to come in or if you were to go online and, and see our website and talk to us on the live chat, we would help you pick out a floor plan. You would work with one of our designers and he would make customizations, rearrange it for you if you wanted to um, help you make the home yours. I've had so many people that's asked me who built my house. Everything that we asked and, and said we wanted, they were willing to listen and go, we'll, we'll make it happen. Not only do we build for our homeowners, we build for their friends, their family. Uh, they even come back to us and build their second and third homes with us. We built, I think it's over 3,500 homes now. Family is important to us. We um, know that the biggest thing about family is trust and we want you to know that we're here for you throughout the process. We're right here by your side and that the house that you envision when you first walk in and meet with a designer, that's the house you're going to get whenever you finish the process and you move in. Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. So here at Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your schedule maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. you out. 
Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back. Back in the game. Back in motion. Back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienville Orthopedic Specialists. We will get you back.
here we go. Pinball Republic Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill. Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone and uh, just letting you guys know we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimal purchase, and you're good to go. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking and uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. Back on the ice for some second period action here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Your Seawolves, thanks to Matt Stoya's two, count them, two goals. One coming with about five minutes in the period, or left in the period. The other one coming with approximately eight seconds in the period. The other goal, I guess we got to talk about it, Gus Ford. The Bay Pest Control Pest of the game getting the goal for the Thunderbirds, but... It's easy to understand why he yeah. is the best. Right, he right. Has a, he has a way to find open eyes. He's good. He's he's pretty good. That's a, that is his 42nd goal this season. Keep in mind, he has 45 assists, because you can't assist you know yourself on a goal, but yeah. he has 45 assists, so that brings him up 47 points. Or, sorry, 87. 87 yeah. points Yikes. on the season. Yikes. So, 87 points on the season for uh, Gus Ford, but all good because Matt Stoya, he got two tonight. He has two. 11 goals on the year, and, you know, a highlight, too, in the first oh, period yeah. was Shepard in the goal. You know, he had nine saves, right. only one guy Absolutely. passed him. Yeah. 16 shots on goal for the Seawolves, 10 shots on goal for the Thunderbirds. As they circle center ice, ready for the puck drop. 20 minutes on the clock. Here we go. Tie up already. And a couple of Seawolves run into each other, and that ends that offensive series. Like we never left. Here we go. Quick passing from the Thunderbirds. They'll get a shot, but Joe Shepard has a glove for just that case. 20 seconds. 
But once again, wide open on the ice here right. on the near side boards. Shepard was able to make that glove save. He's been tested a little bit tonight. We had two in the first period, one that may or may not have hit the crossbar. Uh, another one he out of nowhere saved, and there you go, another one threatening. Face off this time in favor of the Seawolves. They'll dump it, but goes through some traffic into neutral ice. Send it across. Thunderbirds go to skate around their own net, but Jackson Bond forces the issue. Stoya throws the body. Now it's Wong back there. Wong has some time. Instead of going to Montanac, he goes to Bond, and Bond gets tripped. No call. Bond tries to go around. Backhand shot goes just past the right foot of Karpinski. Now Stoya back there. Stoya living in the dirty areas. Shot, save. From Shepard, Stoya now gathers it. Stoya goes cross ice to Bond. Bond back over to Stoya. Now it'll go and bounce around. Seawolves lose it. Good speed for the Thunderbirds, but better defense. And the Seawolves, Helen takes a check. Now he gets the puck. Helen goes backside with a stick and flips it right over. And that goes all the way. No icing called. Felicio and Koch now in a battle with a couple of uh, Thunderbirds. Koch aggressive with the stick. Can't get there. No one gets dumped. Seawolves touch it. It's offsides. I don't know if they knew that. Now we're good. Jan Selak goes across, gets tied up and what well, was not no penalty, but if you ask me, that was an open field tackle. Save from Kropinski. And we will get a face off. The official waved it off, right? Yeah, that was the play. He was happy with what he saw. I mean, we're football guys. And that was that was an open field tackle on kickoff team right there. That was, I mean, open ice, wide base, tack the hip. I mean, it was it was figure form, but all good. Referee didn't see it, so I, I ain't going to say anything more about it. Philip Wong can't quite get there. If you're looking for Justin Barr, he is serving the second of a two-game suspension. So not getting to see the captain tonight. As Schnapp gets tied up with Anderson. And that one goes wide. Kuznetsov has it. Gets around Schnapp. Now to Wong. Wong. His pass gets back to Kuznetsov, and what looked like an opportunity for a quick point-blank shot goes out long. Good job on defense. He takes a shot along the boards, says, hey, I'm leaving anyway. Relax. Schnapp with it. Schnapp goes back. That shot's blocked. Good job by Helen pursuing. That shot into a high-traffic area. Thunderbird goes down, holds a stick of Mullins. Now race for it, physical race. He takes a shot, like a like a hit, not like an actual shot. Settle behind the back of the net. Bond looks like he wants to force the issue. Decides he'll settle as well. 16 minutes 30 seconds left in the second period. Not much action either side. And this one so far. Quick pass. Good stick. And that one. Pass just outside of Butita. John Butita. Now Seawolves with an opportunity. Good speed. That shot. Deflected. Karpinski's unable to glove it. It'll stay in play. Four minutes gone by in the period. There's Ford. Ford with a good stick. A uh, bunch of traffic, and somehow Montanac ends up with it. Stoya flips it up, and aggressive stick checking by Hugo Koch. Now Lissio goes. Lissio can't get to it, but Hugo Koch can't. Koch looking for Wong. Wong's pass completed to Lissio. Lissio skates back around, gets an opportunity, and a 
huge shot goes high and left of Karpinski. And a little less oxygen in the arena after that one. Connor Lind, his shot, or his pass, goes wide, intended for Coach. If it gets there, Coach has a goal. And that shot, quick shot, Karpinski saves. I said a little less oxygen in here because everybody inhaled at the same time. It was a, one of those, you know what I mean? Yeah, because Ford was yeah. weaved right there between the defenders, deked in between them, was able to get right to the net. But thankfully, we did a good job. Seawolves defense proving strong, but the offensive uptick from Carolina has directly correlated to uh, uptick in shots for them. Past that five-minute mark now. Drop pass stolen from the Seawolves. Pass to Kuznetsov goes a little wide. Now Portillo in pursuit. Anderson comes by. Portillo and Anderson have uh, been a headache for the Thunderbirds tonight. They get across. Let's see, like, a good poke check from Koch or Portillo, and Portillo can't grab it before it goes past the blue line. We will get an offsides and a media timeout. That's our first media timeout of the second period. Seawolves up 2-1. Live from Mississippi Coast Coliseum, this is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Hey, Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone, and uh, just letting you guys know, we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you have 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six-month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimum purchase, and you're good to go. Back in the Coliseum, some Saturday night FPHL late season hockey. Next to last home game. Yes, tomorrow being the last uh, regular season home game. We do have one playoff home game guaranteed. We'll be the lower seed. We'll be the four seed. We'll be hosting the first game, the River Dragons. Columbus River Dragons be coming back. Who we ain't play tomorrow. Yes. So uh, a little sneak peek, if you will. Face off after the media timeout. Seawolves have it. They'll go along, and Bond took a shot, but seems to be okay, and immediately goes back in, and he goes to a knee, swinging for the fences. That shot goes wide. Thunderbirds turn. Montanac, good job. Salak goes flying into the boards. Montanac again. Helen goes back around. Helen skates, 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 and skates some more. Finds Bond. Bond all the way across the ice, just out of reach. None that can't get there. Bond has it again. I can't tell you what position Bond plays because he's literally he's he, all, over, he's the all over the place. Sebo's with it. That shot deflected. And Anderson takes a shot into the boards. Tries to get it, but here come the Seawolves. Seawolves with an opportunity. Puck was in the crease. But so was the defense of the Thunderbirds. 13-20 left in the, in the second period. When that rebound opportunity was there, that slot yeah. was crowded. Hugo Koch now. Hugo tries to get it. Anderson. Just behind him. Just behind it. That puck wasn't intended for him, but it ended up right between his legs and the uh, blue portion in front of Karpinski. If you don't know hockey, the blue portion is where it's right in front of the goal. Seawolves, good passing. Quick shot. That one deflected high and out of play. A flying biscuit, if you will. 
Shout out Glass Solutions. I, uh, I've never never had to replace a window because of a hockey puck. I, I think that's one of the joys of one of the, the good things about being living you know, in, in South Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah. Baseball, different story. Baseball, plenty of baseballs. Tie up, quick shot, goes just over the top crossbar, almost takes off the head of the uh, fellow wearing the black and white stripes. Mullins with it, tries to go off the boards, but it's deflected. Mullins tries again, but deflected again. The Seawolves have done a lot better job tonight in the neutral zone, mm -hmm. not seeding control too, Carolina. It seems once they get that center ice, they get past the, the poke check. They just end up running into them. You know, they run into their bottom. Montanac, good effort, ends up freeing that one up. But Lissio, I mean, fighting for his life. And Lissio gets called for that on Gus Ford, and that's a tough penalty. You hear the frustrations from the Seawolves faithful. Boo. That's them. That's I'm not saying that. That's them. That's right. That that's our crowd mic picking it up. Yeah. <laughs> so Danny Lissio goes to the box. This will be the second power play for the Thunderbirds, and this will be the second Glass Solutions penalty kill for the Seawolves. O for two, or sorry, O for one in the first period. Seawolves are O for two on the penalty. On the Firestone power plays, Gulf Coast Firestone power plays. Be a minor penalty, two minutes. What's the official call for hooking? Hook. All right. Let's see this uh, penalty kill, what they can do. Ford drives in. Wong takes that one off the hand, sacrificing the body, and uh, Salak's shot goes wide. And that is a quick shot, a spinning shot, and that one sends the water bottle flying. So you hear the uh, frustration. I'm sure those boos aren't for the penalty kill for the Seawolves. Those are for the decision by the referees. So all tied up here. We'll get you the official uh, ruling on who scored it, but a power play goal. Dustin Baker. For Dustin Look Baker. Like Dustin on the shot. We'll see. 2 2, 11 46, second period. If you wanted a, a good hockey game on a Saturday night, well, there you go. Already, Thunderbirds, and that one was scary. Yep, that was Baker on the goals, his 31st of the year. Dawson Baker. And he was assisted by Gus Ford and Schnapp. And that one takes the mask off of Shepard. Didn't look malicious. And when I say didn't look malicious, I don't see any Seawolves trying to take the heads off of any Thunderbirds. And usually when the goalkeeper has his, uh, has his mask off, it gets uh, a little get chippy. Ugly. Yeah. I was trying to see if it deflected off the pipe. They do a good job, Carolina does, down there behind the cage, making Shepard switch sides. Mm -hmm. Shepard trying to get his mask straightened out down there. Got to keep the, the lettuce fresh. See That's that, right. that hair right there? Huh. We, uh, we're short hair guys, yeah. us. <laughs> it was many years ago. <laughs> Good dream of the lettuce. Shep's good to go. Sea wolves are good to go. And uh, here we go. Cross center ice dumped in. Played by Karpinski. Goes around. And whew, good job by Mullins. Sends it on. Schnapp ends up with it. That one off his back. And sent on. Montanac. Physical play behind the net. It goes to Portillo. Portillo goes up. Tries to get it to Mullins, but just out of reach. Now Batita sends it around. Shepard slows it down. I don't want to say he plays it, but he slows it down. 
Back over to Mononak. Mononak has Wong. Wong skating. Tough pass. Tended for Stoya. Now we go back to Wong. He'll do a kind of a, a sneaky, lazy pass to get Bond behind the boards or behind behind the uh, the defense there, but nothing going. Now Thunderbirds, their opportunity. Anderson gets it. He goes over to Bond. Bond has it. He goes cross ice. That was Lynn. Lynn goes to Bond. Bond skates back around. Is forced by Ford to uh, keep it moving. A lot of pressure from Carolina yeah. deep into the right in the zone. Wong will go to Bond, and Bond will be across the blue line. That'll be an offsides, and that'll take us to our second media timeout of the second period. All tied up here, 2-2, Mississippi Coast Coliseum. This is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking. And uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. What you're seeing is uh, the kiss cam, or it's supposed to be the kiss cam. Take it back down to the ice. Matt Horde in the yellow shirt right there. I know we don't have uh, the crowd mic bumping tonight. Can't necessarily hear him too well, but I'll keep you updated. I don't know what's happening. I think it's a presentation yeah. of some of the money that was raised this evening. Nice, for the autism awareness. Yes. See if we could see what that uh, looks like. $500. How about that? Great hockey, a great cause. Look at you when, with the young eagle eye. I can see that from up here. Uh, I was looking at the <laughs> I was looking at the screen, I'll be honest. <laughs> they were zoomed out. I had to break open the binoculars. Oh, you binoculars. got the binoculars. Then. I didn't even see the binoculars. I That's broke awesome. them out, and I heard the 500 <laughs> If it was blurry on the screen, we could have just made it sound really important. <laughs> Is that five million? Wow. How about that? Shout out to the uh great people that made tonight possible, as well as some of the other great promotional events the Sea Wolves have been able to do tonight. A couple of military appreciation nights. At a Down Syndrome Awareness Night, Autism Awareness Night, a Faith and Family Night. The Sea Wolves have done a great job reaching yeah. out to groups and Hosting groups throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And some some pretty cool uniforms to go along with them, some and, alternates. And there will be an auction tonight for these special jerseys being worn here on Autism Awareness Night. Here comes Jackson Bond. His shot goes wide. And uh, not sure if you could see it on the camera, but uh, right before that, Jackson Bond sent one of the Thunderbird stick flying across the ice. Nobody saw it, so we're good. And uh, not going to touch it. I was Stoya tries to settle it, but can't get a stick on it. It goes for an icing, and we will come all the way back as the Thunderbirds get a regime change. When I say regime change, I mean an everybody getting off the ice. Fresh legs all over. A little, little lull in the action here, and Seawolves trying to get back in it. Yeah, we're. You know, on the feet, it looks like we're having a little bit of problem here. We've got a crew working on it right now. But don't worry. That's what we're here for. That's we'll right. We'll keep you updated. Face off. And looks like Philip Wong's getting kicked out. And then the referee gets overruled, puts Philip Wong back in. <laughs> don't really know what happened there but we'll take it face off goes all the way back Thunderbirds now played along the uh, corner of the board you see the feed cutting in and out we're working on it we'll figure it out 
Thunderbirds with it. That shot goes wide behind the net. Seawolves now. Tie up by the blue line. It's Connor Lind involved. Now Helen involved. And that, that tie up by the blue line has gone to the red line center ice. Stoya ends up skating off. Now pressuring is Batita and stolen away by Bond. Bond takes a shoulder. And here we go. Wong finds Bond. Bond has a little speed. Can catch the edge. Tries to go in front. Or tries to go behind for the wraparound. Fakes it last second. And tries to go uh, back door. But Karpinski just quick enough. And Bond ran out of room. Maybe had a little bit more. Maybe another foot. Maybe two feet to operate. Might have gotten that one. But nonetheless, a face-off in the offensive zone for the Seawolves. Dalton Anderson, face off, gets taken, and Schnapp will dump it, and it goes past Koch. Montanak about there. Montanak behind the line, fighting off Schnapp. And that one's dumped in, goes all the way back. Played back around. Montanak with it. Montanak skating through one, skating through two, gets through another one. Here's Hugo Koch. Koch's shot goes wide. Big collision by the boards. Anderson. Cuts him off. And now Thunderbirds trying to make their way. Montanac takes that one. Looked off the chin, but it wasn't the chin because his body language was not that of somebody who got hit in the chin with a hockey puck. There's Bowens down. Now shot from the Thunderbirds high and right. That one was threatening. But it was also way outside. Bioni tries to make a move. Can't come back. Now goes across. Looking behind, there's Mullins. Mullins shot. Or Mullins pass is deflected off of Schnapp's skate. Now Thunderbirds with a neutral ice. They'll cross the blue line. Here we go. Pass or shot wide. Gus Ford was over there, but couldn't get to him. And now Kuznetsov one-on-one. -on -one, stolen away by the Thunderbirds. Seven minutes remaining. And that shot goes wide. Seven minutes remaining. 2-2 two -two here in Biloxi. That one taken. Not much ice. Both defensive uh, plays right here. Defensive strategies have been pressure, pressure, and a little more pressure. Helen now a slow pass all the way to Portillo. Portillo gets kind of wrapped up. Wong goes. Tries to go between the legs, but ends up Losing his footing, he goes down to the ice. Six minutes, 30 seconds remaining. A big shot, but a good deflection. Helen takes that one off the shin. Now Portillo in a tie-up. Helen with the big check. Now they'll play it along. Seawolves in the neutral ice. Come up it a little faster. Back over. Back around. Now in neutral ice. They'll skate across. Takes a shot. There's Lind again with another shot. That one goes to Montanac, and he'll have to pass it out. Stoya now with it. Stoya is, uh, has two goals tonight, but not necessarily the speed threat. A big shot and a big save by Karpinski. Ooh, five minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the second period. I don't, I don't know if you have blood pressure problems, but this is probably not great for it. It is, uh, we are back and forth, high flying shots, some big checks both ways, two penalties each. Goodness, goodness. Face off win, and played behind their own net is the Thunderbirds. Five thirty left in the second period. That one goes all the way. Connor Lynn in a foot race to get the icing call, and we'll come all the way back. This time in front. We uh, we apologize for the technical difficulties with the camera. I, um, I'll i be honest, I wish I knew how to fix it, or I would. But we, got, we have people working on it as we speak. But uh, in the meantime, just pretend you're listening to the radio. It's probably not the right thing to say there. 
Five minutes, 28 seconds left. Thunderbirds behind their own net. <laughs> Passing the neutral ice. Batita plays it on. It gets past Lind. And now they'll battle for it. Gets past Bond. Goes all the way back. And Batita has to play it behind his own net. Montanac. Aggressive. Montanac is the... Uh, is the consistent presence where he's just going to be hounding you and hounding you. He's going to make, make you know he's there. And then you skate away from Montanac. You finally get away from that, and you run into Matt Stoya, which might hurt more. Big shot, deflected, and a good hit by Bond. And that one, a backhanded beauty in the top left corner for the Thunderbirds. They take a 3-2 to two lead. Quick skating. Quick stick handling and not much building there. Just quick, I hate to say it, just a good move and a, and a a nice shot. But, yeah, that one finds the back of the net. Like I said, top left or over Joe Shepard's top right. And, uh, boy, that hurts. Four minutes, 38 seconds left in the period. Seawolves trying to score again. Shots on goal, 24 for the Seawolves, 15 for the Thunderbirds as we get a tie-up and nobody's moving on the near side. Skated across, taken away. And we will get a whistle looking like a icing as they will skate all the way back. That will take us to our third and final media timeout of the second period. Four minutes, 17 seconds when we come back here in Biloxi live. I feel like I got the best value at Heritage Homes. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions that I plan on making in my lifetime. And I feel like I got the best price for what I wanted. I love my house. <laughs> We're a building a lot home builder, and what that means is if you own your property or if you're looking for property to build on, then we can build on it for you. We'll help you find a floor plan and customize it. Whether you were to come in or if you were to go online and, and see our website and talk to us on the live chat, we would help you pick out a floor plan. You would work with one of our designers and he would make customizations, rearrange it for you if you wanted to um, help you make the home yours. I've had so many people that's asked me who built my house. Everything that we asked and, and said we wanted, they were willing to listen and go, we'll, we'll make it happen. Not only do we build for our homeowners, we build for their friends, their family. Uh, they even come back to us and build their second and third homes with us. We built, I think it's over 3,500 homes now. Family is important to us. We um, know that the biggest thing about family is trust and we want you to know that we're here for you throughout the process. We're right here by your side and that the house that you envision when you first walk in and meet with a designer, that's the house you're going to get whenever you finish the process and you move in. Oh. All right, we are back. And again, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Back on the ice. Petstuka, he has it. That one goes off long skate. Lissio gets the rebound. Had a shot right there, but Karpensky was ready for it. Now well, played on and physical from the Thunderbirds getting through that one. And Shep throwing a shoulder, getting a piece of it, deflecting that shot wide. Three minutes, 40 seconds left. Shep with another deflection. Thunderbirds. Trying to make something shake. Wong loses a stick, picks it up, and immediately goes back. Good poke check. Physical play, but Thunderbird still. Opportunity. That one goes off the post, and the rebound goes back in the goal. And when it rains, it pours. Seawolves now down 4-2 to two on the rebound shot. Oh, not the period you wanted after the quick or the, the goal with eight seconds left in the first. You're going in with a 2 1 lead. Three unanswered goals for the Thunderbirds put the Seawolves down. 
I uh, I understand the camera's not working, but trust me, you did not miss much. As uh, Seawolves now down four to two, and looks like Jackson Bond gets put in the penalty box. Oh boy! Discussion at center ice. I don't know what happened. When they update the live stats, we'll figure it out. But uh, Jackson Bond's in the penalty box. Referee is our uh, getting the business from the fans. After they're talking, we'll see. Face-off win goes in favor of the Seawolves. That one's sent on by Connor Lind. Karpinski ends up catching it. Not sure if that'll count as an official shot, but here you go. Glass Solutions penalty kill for the Seawolves already. The Thunderbirds getting a power play goal, but uh, goodness, he takes takes a leg out. Connor Lynn goes to the ice. He's a little slow to get up. Schnapp gets put into the boards. Settled behind the net. Pasuka. Shepard trying to uh, find out where it is. That's a big shot. And deflecting, gone all the way out, cleared out for the kill. Gus Ford with it now. Ford getting through most of the defense. He goes down, referee's arms up, and we're looking at a five-on-three situation. Seawolves not in a great spot right here. Minute two left on the Jackson Bond penalty. And now we will see what looks like Connor Mullins. Yep, Connor Mullins headed the box. So, five on three for a minute and two seconds. And then for 58 seconds, it'll be five on four. That is taking into account that we keep it out of the back of the net here. Two minutes, 26 seconds left. Zide, or Zide, second time. Thunderbirds have it. Quick passing. That shot goes high and left. Still with it. Pastuka, the top by the blue line. Goes down. Back to Pastuka. Pastuka goes back down to the to the dot. Bottom of the dot. Thunderbirds go back. Pastuka at the top. Pastuka with a shot. Deflected. Goes left. And there you go. There's our temporary camera. Our webcam. Another shot deflected. Wong gets a skate on it. Played back by Ford. Ford to Pastuka. Back to Pastuka. That shot deflected. Pastuka goes in, swinging for the fences. A great job by the penalty kill. Keeping it out. There's Ford. Ford's going to take a shot. They knocked the water bottle off. It's on the ice. All good. Another opportunity. They take a shot. That one goes wide. And now, here we go. Opportunity for the Seawolves. Jackson Bond, he takes a shot just outside. Quick skate. He goes to the ground, wants a whistle. He's not going to get one. Minute, eight seconds left. The initial power play is over. 30 seconds left, five on four. As you saw Jackson Bond get out of the penalty box and immediately get a scoring chance. Ford, that puck goes to Schnapp. Schnapp just plays it on. Now back across. That's a shot. That goes high and up left and almost takes, almost gives a, a haircut to somebody in the stands. But uh, we'll get a whistle and a face off with 42 seconds left. I uh, I know the, uh, the camera is not ideal. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We might have fixed it. I'm going to keep my pin behind my yeah, left. Yeah, there you go. There you go. 
change in my left pocket. <laughs> He's in the right. There you go. That one goes all the way to Kropinski. And well done. We did it. We fixed it. All right. Back down. Cross center ice. Around into the corner of the boards. 25 seconds left. We are even strength here in Biloxi. Montanac kind of in the middle of all that. 10 seconds. Montanac again trying to freeze it. Now Schnapp gets out there looking for a quick pass across the ice. He'll get an opportunity for a shot. Nope. Goes behind the net. And great job by Mullins of forcing him into the boards and keeping the clock running. So that'll do it. Three unanswered goals in the second period for the Thunderbirds, and that does not bode well. Two-goal deficit for the Seawolves when they come back. Live from the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, this is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. I feel like I got the best value at Heritage Homes. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions that I plan on making in my lifetime, and I feel like I got the best price for what I wanted. I love my house. <laughs> We're a building a lot home builder, and what that means is if you own your property or if you're looking for property to build on, then we can build on it for you. We'll help you find a floor plan and customize it. Whether you were to come in or if you were to go online and, and see our website and talk to us on the live chat, we would help you pick out a floor plan. You would work with one of our designers and he would make customizations, rearrange it for you if you wanted to um, help you make the home yours. I've had so many people that's asked me who built my house. Everything that we asked and, and said we wanted, they were willing to listen and go, we'll, we'll make it happen. Not only do we build for our homeowners, we build for their friends, their family. Uh, they even come back to us and build their second and third homes with us. We built, I think it's over 3,500 homes now. Family is important to us. We um, know that the biggest thing about family is trust and we want you to know that we're here for you throughout the process. We're right here by your side and that the house that you envision when you first walk in and meet with a designer, that's the house you're going to get whenever you finish the process and you move in.
Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back, so come out and see them. Thanks, guys. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. So here at Gold Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back.
here we go. Paintball Republic Sea Wolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill. Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone and uh, just letting you guys know we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you have 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimal purchase, and you're good to go. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking and uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. I feel like I got the best value at Heritage Homes. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions that I plan on making in my lifetime. And I feel like I got the best price for what I wanted. I love my house. <laughs> We're a building a lot home builder and what that means is if you own your property or if you're looking for property to build on then we can build on it for you. We'll help you find a floor plan and customize it. Whether you were to come in or if you were to go online and, and see our website and talk to us on the live chat, we would help you pick out a floor plan. You would work with one of our designers and he would make customizations, rearrange it for you if you wanted to um, help you make the home yours. I've had so many people that's asked me who built my house. Everything that we asked and, and said we wanted, they were willing to listen and go, we'll, we'll make it happen. Not only do we build for our homeowners, we build for their friends, their family. Uh, they even come back to us and build their second and third homes with us. We built, I think it's over 3,500 homes now. Family is important to us. We um, know that the biggest thing about family is trust and we want you to know that we're here for you throughout the process. We're right here by your side and that the house that you envision when you first walk in and meet with a designer, that's the house you're going to get whenever you finish the process and you move in.
back in the Coliseum, the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, the Wolves Den, all the other names that it goes by. Uh, your Seawolves, the good guys, are down 4-2, to two, even though Seawolves have 25 shots on goal to the Thunderbirds, 19. But nonetheless, still, Seawolves in the next 20 minutes need two to keep this thing going. Carolina only had nine shots on goal last period, but three found the three back goals. of the net. Face-off win by Carolina starts this off. As they'll start with a two-on-three opportunity. Physical play from Connor Lenz sets, separates Gus Ford from the puck. And back on it. Ford tries to get a wraparound shot. And what was threatening, if we were in Carolina, the crowd would have been all over that one. I'm looking for a passing lane. Ends up drop passing is Baker. Baker. Tries to find Batita. Batita gets separated by Mullins. And now a little trouble is it. Kuznetsov mishandled it twice, but nobody around him. Gets the pass off to Portillo. Portillo pressured by two Thunderbirds. And now they'll try to make something happen. Skating along, finding the slot. Tries to get a pass, but it's deflected. Bond ends up with it. And a creative pass to Portillo. Now Portillo goes to find Bond, but just out of reach as Schnapp kind of in the area when he was passing. Bioni tries to make something shake, but Montanac will find it. Montanac passes around, and then now all the way to Stoya, but he's not able to get there. Of course, the issue, and that one goes off the boards and in front of the crease. Karpinski had to save a, some friendly fire there. That went off the boards. Right back in possession of the Thunderbirds. Shep just sticks it out. Played along the nets. Two minutes gone in the period. That's a story with it. The Seagulls did a great job in the first period in the neutral zone, but second period not so, and they need to get back on track here in this third period. It seems that the Thunderbirds have changed their approach from the beginning of the game. Definitely changed. It's, and the uptick in pressure. Oh, big hit. That might get the juices flowing there. But uh, like you said, definitely a uh, a change, kind of how the Seawolves has been playing. That shot goes wide. And we'll get a whistle. And a little altercation. By the fans there, as, uh, Helen comes in. Helen wants every bit of that action. A couple of whistles and the referee's hands up. I don't know if he's trying to get him to stop or he's going to put somebody in the box. Looks like uh, we got somebody headed there. Not sure what the number is. We'll see when the live stats update us, but... Seawolves got a guy in the box before the discussions even had. Can't make out his number from here. Uh -uh. But looks like Carolina's going to get somebody in the box also. No, maybe the door is open and then it closed. Maybe not. Looks like the pest was headed towards the box. Yeah. We'll see. Two minutes on the clock. And that is not ideal if you're down two goals. It's still discussing. Joe Shepard kind of pleading his case. There's 17 minutes, 26 seconds left in this one. Can't make out who's in the box. I think it's Clusat, but I don't want to tell you something wrong. Might be the new addition for the Seawolves. Oh. Yep, Tristan Clusat for boarding. For boarding. Clusat arrived yesterday. <laughs> signed on the 5th, skated last night, now in the penalty box. He's just getting a tour of the facility, that's all. Carolina, good save by Shepard. 
kind of got turned around there and had to throw a, a leg at it. Settled with his hand, back over. In that low slot area, off the side of the net. And I see you pointing. The, uh, Losing yeah. track of the Thunderbirds have had a couple of open guys. And that one goes up, almost out of play, but finds the top of the board, skates back in. Good save, keeps it from going all the way back by the uh, Thunderbird net, but still they'll have to check up as it crosses the blue line. Skating around this forward. Nothing going. He'll pass it to a teammate. 16 minutes, 30 seconds left. Thunderbirds patient around their own blue line. They'll skate up, pass it around. Shot looking like it was coming from forward, but just over a stick. One minute left in the power play. Thunderbirds have a couple guys in the little slot. That one deflected. That one deflected. Thunderbirds still have it. Another opportunity. Schnapp tries to go sneakily around the back of the net. Schnapp, a uh, former Bay Pest Control pest of the game. And that shot saved. Finally, Seawolves getting a stick on it, but can't get it past the blue line. Another shot is saved. That time, Connor Lynn sacrificing the body. Five or 15 minutes, 57 seconds left in the third period. 31 seconds left on the Clusat boarding penalty. A uh, Glass Solutions penalty kill. Seen a couple of those tonight. Not many Gulf Coast Firestone power plays. Thunderbirds with one power play goal tonight. Other than that, have been uh, pretty solid. One for five. The uh, Seawolves penalty kill tonight. We'll get a whistle. I'm not sure what for, but stick tie up. Now Thunderbirds right where they left off. Quick shot goes right over Shepard. Now one goes behind Shepard. Stays out of the goal, so we're good. Yeah, that one behind him, behind him, his head. That one tries to be deflected from Batita. Back across. He'll send it on. Deflected. Stoya almost deflected it in. Tries to get a wrap around. Good save. And absolute pandemonium behind the net as even strength. Seawolves kill off the penalty. Now a battle for it and not much doing. Everybody's just kind of content. 15 minutes left on the clock. Alicio avoids a huge hit. And that shot goes wide. Shepard takes a swing at it. And now here come the Seawolves. Two on three. Three on three. <laughs> Strategic line change as Montanac dumps it in. Portillo tries to force the issue, but it goes out, and the Thunderbirds will skate with it in their own zone. We'll see if the Thunderbirds are going to try to do a little stalling here. Let the clock run out on the third period, sitting on the two-point lead. You'll see them get much more patient. The Schnapp sends it around. Shep wants icing, but no icing called. Schnapp with an opportunity. His shot off a skate. Nothing doing. Schnapp still with it. Violently skating around the ice. Seawolf loses a stick. That's long, but still keeping the body. And uh, shout out to Bioni with the assist to Wong, pushing his stick towards him. Here comes Portillo. Portillo drops to Wong. Wong drops it, intended for Helen, but can't quite get it out. Now Anderson's job to stop the offensive pressure. Goes past Portillo. Helen goes to a knee. Sent back out by Kuznetsov. That puck was sitting on the ice in front of the crease. Yes, for quite a while. Too long for comfort. Yes. yes. Here's Gus Ford taken away by Philip Wong, and Stoya takes that one off the shoulder. If it was, uh, if they were attempting to get a first down, that was a perfectly placed pass. However, they are not. Pass to Stoya. Stoya goes around forward. Good move. He takes a quick shot, deflected off a skate. Another shot off the side of the net. Stoya with another shot. 
this one off the skate. Stoya is huge. Cannot say that enough. Stoya's a big fella, but he moves. Showing some speed there as he skates off the ice for a shift change. 12 minutes, 40 seconds, 45 seconds remaining. We'll get an icing, and that'll take us to our first media timeout. A long break. Still down two goals. Seawolves looking to make something shake. Live from the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, this is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. So here at Gold Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Back on the ice as they skate towards the offensive zone for the Seawolves. Seawolves still down two goals here, four to two, with 12 minutes and 44 seconds on the clock. Thunderbirds answering in the shot category, 23 shots on goal to the Seawolves, 26. It was a good job on the power play kill by the Seawolves mm -hmm. to keep it within reach here. Jackson Bond in the face-off circle. He's been everywhere tonight except for um, at goaltender. That's the only position he has not played tonight. Wong takes a shot, and Karpinski saved that one due to positioning. Wong dumps it in. Karpinski will come out to play it. Stoya hops off the ice. Now Lissio sends it. Bond will collect the rebound. Ford back there tries to drop it. Goes off a of Bond, and now a panic for it. They'll send it on. Skating back and uh, not getting the icing. Bond sends it on kind of lazily. It's the only time he's not moving full speed. Fresh legs for both teams here. Puck gets past Connor Lind. Now Helen's going to go after it, but Lind will get it and shake off the, the check. Here's Lissio. Now pressured by Anderson. Anderson trying to separate the opponent from the puck, doing a good job now. Helen gets in there, and shout out to Dalton Anderson just driving his opponent. Good save by Shepard. We'll get another whistle. Face off in the offensive zone for the Thunderbirds, 12 minutes, sorry, 11 minutes, 26 seconds left. We would mentioned during one of the breaks, a uh, good crowd here in the Coliseum, even though the Biloxi Shuckers, the AA affiliate for the Brewers, right down the road have just started. So everybody loves their Seawolves, everybody loves their Shuckers. But this time of the season is when they get split. That's right. <laughs> it's tough. Hey, a lot of kids here tonight on the oh, Autism yeah. Awareness Night. Good activities for the kids. Saw a couple of my students here tonight. How unfortunate. How unfortunate. So on spring break, I said, no, give me a couple <laughs> more days. I'll see you guys Monday. Passed around the back of the net. Helen can't get to it. and He's no. tackled. Straight up tackled. Another open open field tackle tonight. No, Lissio ends up no, no hands up. Lissio sends it. Karpensky didn't know where it was. Now Coach comes back around. Haven't heard much from Coach tonight. Usually he is all over the place. Sent on. No worries for Shep. Now played odd by Anderson. Crowd wanting the tripping Crowd, call. Yeah, didn't didn't touch him. He just lost his footing there. 
definitely uh, evident. Portillo sends it around to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov just sends it back up. Portillo takes a off shot. The pipe. Like you said, off the pipe. Shot saved by Shepard. And that one dumped out. Portillo back over to Wong. Wong finds Kuznetsov. He has Portillo cut into the center of the ice. He'll send it, and it gets deflected and out of play to 10 minutes on the dot. Now, here's a hockey broadcast question. Every five minutes, you take a media timeout. Does, do we get a media timeout here? I think we are. All right. So, second media timeout, 10 minutes left. Seawolves down 4-2. to two. This is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off. Check, check. Hockey broadcast question. It's after 10 minutes, so we'll get immediate time out of the next whistle. Connor Lind, after the desperation pass from Bond. And now sent on. Seawolves will check up, and there comes Stoya, patrolling the waters. They'll skate back around, and Thunderbirds, like you said earlier, just content to stall. Nine minutes, 30 seconds after the faceoff and all of that. Seawolves didn't touch the puck for 30 seconds, and it was in their offensive zone. Yeah. Passed down. Connor Lynn has to reverse field. It's Montanac. Montanac's slammed into the glass. We'll get a whistle. Montanac not too pumped about that. Referee says, hey, fellas, relax. And that will take us to our media timeout. Live from Mississippi Coast Coliseum, this is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys. Shout out Matt Horde, doing a uh, good job with the mic in his hand. The Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Harold Rose, West Barnett, doing a good job so far, huh? Yeah, going well, going well, going well. except for the problem with the live feed. But thankfully, the, yeah, tech, we figured it out. the yeah. tech crew here at the Coliseum was able to control alt delete enough to get it going. <laughs> All right, Philip Wong in the faceoff circle. He goes to the ground to tie up and ends up with the uh, with the puck. Back over, I believe that's Stoya. Al played along the net and driven into the boards. That was Montanac. Montanac finds Stoya. Stoya takes a shot just wide. Almost broke the glass behind the net. Big wind up on that shot mm -hmm. from Stoya. We'll get a icing, and I'm not sure if you picked up, but somebody is not happy with yeah. the referee. Yeah, hopefully the crowd, hopefully our crowd mic didn't pick that up. <laughs> hopefully it didn't, yes. They'll have a discussion, and after the icing, all the way back. Offensive zone face-off for the Seawolves. No, looks like a neutral zone face-off, and we got a little, little extracurriculars here near the blue line. Between Lucas Helen. Oh, good. They came into nah. the camera feed. So I'll give you uh, some a lore update. Lucas Helen and Jacob Schnapp do not like each other. A lot of people around the league, a lot of teams don't like Lucas Helen, and a lot of teams don't like Jacob Schnapp. So when those guys get together, there's usually uh, usually fireworks. 
Schnapp will hide behind the referee, though. You watch it. Ah. Little poke and go tattle. Mm -hmm. Now played back, and that will be an icing. So, yeah, an interesting thing to look up after that story would be, where is he in the birth order? Yeah, there you and, go. And that's yeah, usually, yeah. That, 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 that sounds like the baby of the family. Yes, yes. Face off in the defensive zone for the Seawolves. Shout out a Omnitech icing call. I played back. Shepard has to get a stick on it, but its momentum was not in front of the goal, so nothing really crazy. Good athletic play and a figure form tackle. That's going to get a penalty. And the Seawolves, as much as I love to say this, a Gulf Coast Firestone power play. Maybe. Maybe. No. So you're telling me that when the referee held his hand up after the tackle, there wasn't a penalty? That Talked hurts. himself out of it. That's crazy. I'm a walking jinx. Somebody was offside. I just jinx everything. Somebody was offside. That, that, that's, I thought it was the tackle. Yeah. With the face off right there on the dot. Who knows? It's at least 15 yards. We need to mic up the. <laughs> we need something. Yeah. We need to mic up the head official down here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. And now some trouble with the face off and the uh, Seawolves faithful not too pumped with the referees. Lissio ends up with the face off. He runs into a Thunderbird, and that one is tipped up off the boards. Played again, and a whistle. And another face-off. I am, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm having trouble following this one. I'm yeah. not going to lie to yeah, you. I wasn't able to find the signal from the referee. On our handy-dandy signal chart here to yeah, our we right. Do, yeah. We're over there at the bench having a conversation with Skinner. Looks like Schnapp is uh, talking to Helen on the bench, and I'm sure they're having a great conversation. Yeah, they're right there at the glass. Yep. Hopefully. Face-off win, played on by the Seawolves. And they'll go, and they have Lind. Lind tries to find Lissio, and Lissio... Misses the initial opportunity, but good effort stays with it. Fights off a body. Lissio still battling. And we'll get another whistle. And the fans right there behind uh -huh. the goal are getting a little excited. That was interesting. So we'll get a uh, regime change for both teams. And looks like a penalty. Yes. A Gulf Coast Firestone power play. For the Seawolves. Looks like number eight, Bioni, headed to the box. Justin Bioni. Bioni. Good player for the Thunderbirds. Going to the box. So, two minutes on the clock. And when you need when you need two goals in seven minutes and 49 seconds, the other team going down two minutes, that helps. Let's see if we can get a... Got to do it. Got to convert here. a goal here. here in this power play. 0 for 2 tonight on the Gulf, Gulf Coast Firestone power plays. Hopefully... We'll make it one for three. The call is hooking. Big shot by Koch. Deflected and frozen quickly. Fans are upset because the puck was frozen so quick, but then it two seconds, not even a second after. It had dropped back on the ice. Right. It was, yeah, and you see Helen. Saw a similar uh, thing like this today during the um, during an NHL game. And when the ref loses sight of the puck, yeah, it he'll is blow the, it is. he blows the whistle dead. And did not come very unlucky for the Seawolves on that whistle. Face off goes in favor of the Thunderbirds. And that one is tipped and out of play. Oh, man. Only 12 seconds gone on the Firestone power play. Sheesh. The, uh, the whistles tonight. Sorry, the whistles in the past minute. <laughs> Another face off. Seawolves get it. There's Koch. That pass is deflected. And credit where credit's due. Yuri Pastuka for the Thunderbirds has had a pretty good night defensively. He's been 
It's just about everywhere. That pass, sorry, shot sent wide. Seawolves on the power play will settle it. And Jackson Bond kind of running the point guard. Good stick to get around, and they avoid the big hit. Neither one of the guys involved in that collision would have enjoyed that. Under seven minutes. One minute, five seconds left on the power play. Here comes Bond. Bond tries to get it over to Koch. Doesn't get all the way through. Now it'll go back. Stoya. Stoya sends it around. Unable to gather it. That's Wong and Portillo down in there fighting for their lives against the near side of the boards in the corner. And that's sent on. 35 seconds left on the power play. Stoya with it. Takes the pass from Shepard. Finds Wong. Wong sends it around. Takes an awkward bounce. Now Stoya back with it. That one goes over the stick of Helen, but good effort. Good pursuit. He ends up with it. Licio steals it and is sitting in front of the crease for a split second. Not able to turn around. Uh -uh. Ten seconds Stoya. left in the power play. Stoya's shot deflected up off the chest protector. Karpinski, and then that shot deflected slow roller. That will do it for the power play, the Gulf Coast Firestone power play. And here we go. So back at even strength, five minutes, 38 seconds. See, we'll still down two goals. Schnapp back on the ice. He settles it. A ripper from the Thunderbirds. And I'll be honest, Joe Shepard made that one look easy. Did. Right in the glove. Watched it in. Five minutes, 30 seconds. But once again, he was wide open right there. Distant inside the blue line was able to rear back and let a rocket go, but Shepard with the save. Connor Lind ends up dumping it. Good effort and no offsides call. There it is. Yeah, he was offsides. The officials have not been giving the Seawolves much leniency. And I think the crowd has had enough of it. Yes. You know, coming up, waning minutes of the contest. Two goals needed. Not much time left. Five minutes, 21 left. There's some more chance in support of the referees. I think they're saying, ref, you're a saint. That, that's, so that's, that, that, that's what I hear through yeah. the crowd mic. Ref, you something. I think they're saying you're a saint. I mean, it's a week after Easter, you know what I mean? All right. Played in. Caught. And off the boards, Ford has trouble with it. Lissio capitalizes. Wong tries to get it. And they want a tripping. But, again, just some slick ice. Loose footing. Long goes back. Tries to make a play reaching around, but can't get there. Shepard makes a move. Sorry, not Shepard. <laughs> Bond makes Montanac makes a move on Snop. Bond with a hop, skip, and a jump gets there, but the pass. It's too wide. Four minutes, 30 seconds left. Seawolf's starting to feel the pressure. Wong tries to get it around and stolen. Here comes the Thunderbirds. Two on three. Now an opportunity. That's Pastuka coming around sneakily, but a battle for it and a takedown for Montanac. That shot goes wide. Right back to Montanac. Or Klusak, sorry. Klusak. Clusut. Clusut. New name. Trying to learn it. Big shot from Clusut. Just kind of goes up there and says, get out of the way. Portillo in pursuit. And really, River, <laughs> they're just, they're really just trying to keep it out. Thunderbird's not making any offensive moves other than a couple of quick cuts. Just dumping the puck but and yeah. making the Seawolves chase it. 
doing a good job getting a shot, and that one, the rebound goes right in front. I believe that was Butita. Was right in front. Shep stopped the initial shot, but the rebound just uh, tough angle. After the all the action flowed to the far side, right. Butita was camped out right there in the low slot and was able to get the rebound, and <laughs> Shepard wasn't able to turn around and get there in time. He could cover one side, but could not cover the other side. So, after a uneventful third period, the Carolina Thunderbirds score their fourth unanswered goal to go up five to two. Played along and see what was trying to make something work. That'll go back all the way for an icing, and we will get our final media timeout. So, live from the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, this is the Seawolves Broadcast Network. go. Paintball Republic Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill. Back on the ice following our final media timeout of the period. I'm not going to say the game because you never know. You never know. But Seawolves, three goals in 15 minutes, and they need three goals. The John Batita goal, assisted by Nate Healy and Jacob Schnapp, as much as I hate to say it, Jacob Schnapp gets the assist. I must get a little bit thirsty. Yeah, hate it. <laughs> uh, all right, all good. Back at it. Philip Wong in the face-off circle. Three minutes and 15 seconds left. Seawolf down two to five. Played along. Yeah, you know, with the amount of open ice, the Thunderbirds have been able to find tomorrow when the River Dragons come into town. They're quick. Oh, yeah. Very it, quick. It's the one seed in the Continental Division. Seawolves at number four and uh, Carolina at number two. That shot was quick, deflected, and sent into the boards, and he's met by three Seawolves. That's not a comfortable way to end the shot. Lissio with it. He'll go slow play it back around, and that's Lynn. Lynn gets pressured, and he'll have to force the issue. Lynn making some moves, and Gets down the ice, dumps it in. And nobody really even comes near him. So now Lissio, good poke check. Helen stopping it. And Helen will dump it in. This one to Karpinski's right. Lissio in pursuit, kind of giving a, a grab there. Now Helen will send it back on. Gus Ford will duck his head as that one almost takes the top off. Two minutes left. Two minutes left. Seawolves have to score now if they want to make something work. The River Dragons come in tomorrow night. And then the final three games are over in Baton Rouge, correct? Yes. This Pastuka takes a shot. Now another opportunity put away. Pastuka again has had a phenomenal game tonight. That one, big hit by Helen and gets the referee involved in that one. I think that was a little bit on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now one. And a loose puck corralled by the Seawolves. Helen sends it on. And, oh, had an open man and Philip Wong, but bounces over the skate, bounces over the stick, can't grab it. But a awkward bounce off the glass goes to Wong. He drops it. 
But uh, too much defensive pressure, he can't do much with it. One minute left. Seawolves with it on the near side. And that one is saved and kept on the offensive zone. And uh, Seawolf goes in and it finds the net. I lost it. I look up. I see the red light going. And yeah, that's. Mines uh, went to the hip check yeah, down here on the goal line. And that's a late goal with 47 seconds remaining, six to two. As uh, you hate to see it, but. Some of the Seawolves faithful say, all right, we'll catch you tomorrow. Hate to see it. And what was a, a pretty balanced game all through, you yeah. know, late in the second period, they kind of ran away Wait, with it. With the three goals yeah, yeah. that they weren't able to respond to. It, it has been a while since the Seawolves have found the back of the net. All right. We will uh, start, start this game pretty hot with uh, – what was it, Matt Stoya's two first period goals? Yeah. You know, that's what, you know, the games I've been up here and calling is consistency for yeah. 60 minutes. Right. And the Seawolves going to have to put that together, for, try to make a run in the playoffs, especially with the River Dragons. You got a three-game series. Three-game series with the River Dragons. They're fast. They move the puck clean. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to stop giving so much free ice. In the defensive zone. Face-off win. And Helen wants something. Helen wants to uh, throw the gloves. Drop the gloves, sorry. <laughs> throw the fist, drop the gloves. I played back around their net. And Thunderbirds just trying to kind of milk the clock here. Helen throws the body. Play behind their own net. And unless the Seawolves pressure them, they're going to stay there for 20 seconds. All right, now again, see the Seawolves' uh, aggressiveness uptick, definitely reeling off of that uh, frustrating goal there. And there's five seconds left. Thunderbirds, Batita will freeze it. He'll send it, and that will do it. So that does it here in Biloxi. Seawolves down 6-2 to two after scoring two goals in the first period. Unable to find the net the rest of the game. Hate to see it, but uh, it is what it is. I'll look forward to what we're going to see tomorrow. What time yeah. is puck drop? Four o'clock tomorrow on a Sunday. So just uh, just in time, you go to church, get you something to eat, come watch some hockey. So, Held Rose, West Barnett, you good? We're good. Awesome, man. Thank you for watching. Got some playoffs coming up. Got a couple of games, a uh, last home game tomorrow, and then a series against the Zydeco, and then some playoff hockey. Season ticket ticket holders can get playoff tickets now, open to the public on the 9th. There you go. Shout out to Autism Awareness. A great night. Some money raised. Shout out to the Seawolves organization. Live from the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, this is the Seawolves.